Um, I haven't anybody joined yet, but um, I wanted to uh, go over a few things about um, the assignment um, this week for uh, the overloading and templates stuff. So, um, oh, I did just return back the first exam, um, although I haven't really posted an announcement about it yet, but um, you might want to go and review the uh, re review your answers um, and the, uh, the the solution that was posted um, for the exam questions. So um, the average was about seventy for the students that attempted the exam. Um, well, maybe not quite that high. Um, so I might I might end up curving the exam a little bit. We'll see. But but yeah, if if you did. At, you, you were doing probably pretty good if you got above, uh, it got in the 80s or so. Um, you're doing above average for the, the, the class, basically. So, um, all right, let's, the, the, so there, there's some uh, things in assignment um, seven here uh, in particular. Um, well, you know, uh, templatizing the, the class, but also, um, Um, there, there's some steps in here where you're, we're going to be creating a new branch, okay? And I kind of want to talk about, I'll probably talk about that both today and also on Thursday. Um, we'll see how people do with that. So, But uh, let me go ahead. I haven't um, accepted the assignment yet or got it set up yet in my... Um, um, Visual Studio here. Looking at my Visual Studio running. All right, there's the assignment seven. So let me go ahead and do the usual steps here to get going. Uh, hopefully everybody's kind of familiar with running through this checklist uh, at this point for the assignments. Um, so I accepted the assignment and got a copy of it on GitHub, which is what we're looking at right now. Um, let's go ahead and clone the repository. into my sync assignments directory. I'll open up the repository there then. So um, and um, so once you've successfully cloned the repository, we need to configure it uh, and then confirm that um, um, use the build system to build things correctly. So if you haven't configured things yet, you might get these information. Um, so if you don't, um, um, well, you should first run the configure from the command line, that'll set up the, uh, the configuration to find where the include files are and some other things like that. So we've, we've talked about these kinds of things before. So let's open up a terminal. Configuration. So after we do that, we get our VS Code um, director here with all the configuration, and we get the .clang format. So could make the IntelliSense happy if you've got your IntelliSense, um, you've got the C++ uh, IntelliSense uh, uh, extension installed correctly. So um, and you know if you just got the everything set up, you should be able to. Whenever you save your file, re-indent your code and stuff like that. And you should also be able to do uh, control shift one to do clean. Control shift two should build everything. And then control shift three to run it. Okay. So in this case, actually, we are running some tests initially here. So um, then after that, we could go ahead and create the um, uh, the issues here. So there's only four tasks this time for the assignment, uh, but the fourth task is really kind of to, to redo 
to work on the first three tasks, but to, but to templatize the code that you do. Uh, so. We're going to be implementing um, some functions um, and then doing this operator overloading. So let me, I'll talk about that first here. So we're going to do all these tasks. All right. And then as usual, uh, you should have a feedback pull request here. I'll go ahead and link issue one with it. All right. Um, so as usual, I'll get you started, but I mostly kind of want to jump all the way to talking about um, um, creating a new branch in um, uh, Smart Task 4. Um, and then we'll talk more about, about templatizing stuff then maybe on Thursday or see if people have questions about that. So, um, so we're back to, we're, we're gonna be creating a list class here. Um, so, so this is, uh, we, we've had similar, um, classes like this before, list or, or, or a list type before. So it, it's basically to meant to be a data structure that holds an unordered um, collection of items, right? Um, and we're gonna start off though by having it hold an unordered collection of integers. And then later we're gonna templatize it because so, so the main thing about, um, about uh, class templates is they allow us to create containers uh, that we can put any kind of type in it that we want to, okay? So, so like a list or a set that we've talked about um, really aren't that useful if, if all you can do is hold lists of integers or sets of integers or, or um, um, I think we've done list of strings before, right? So, you know, if you wanted to have, uh, if, if you first create a, a class for a list of integers, and then you want to have a list of strings. So the only mechanism so far that you would have to be able to support that is you'd have to, to basically copy all the code that implements the list of integers um, and then just modify it so that it's, it's, it's holding um, a list of strings instead of a list of integers, right? And then you'd have two essentially identical copies of the code, but, but one for your uh, integer containers class and one for your um, string container class, right? So, so templates kind of solve that problem so that we can actually have containers that hold any kind of type that we want, um, but we don't have to duplicate the code, right? So we can just have one set of code that defines a generic container, um, so a generic template type um, into which we can make concrete um, instances of, of a container to hold whatever, to hold like an integer or to hold a list of strings or whatever we want to do with it, right? Um, but, we, but before we get to that, um, uh, we're actually going to be looking at operator overloading, all right? So operator overloading is a really powerful thing. So this allows us to um, um, define operations, define operators, um, so they, they can be called on instances of, of our class, right? Um, so, you know, we, we've talked about this before. When you create a new class, you're adding a new data type to the, to the basic C++ language, right? So when we create our list class, we can create, we can then uh, instantiate variables of type list, just like we could instantiate a variable of, of, of an int or a float or something like that. So one of the built-in types, right? But then the other thing, so so like uh, like for ints and floats, you have like operations like plus and minus defined for doing addition and subtraction, right? So so operator overloading allows us to uh, define what operations mean for our user defined types. Okay, and so we're gonna we're gonna add in um, this uh, two right hand arrow um, operator in order to define appending to our list, um, and we're gonna 
to find the, the, the two left arrows, which is the um, um, output operator usually. We're, but we're gonna override, overload that for our class to implement prepending. Um, and then we're gonna use operator plus uh, um, to implement concatenation for our class, right? Um, so yeah, for each of the first three tasks, you actually have to write two functions, but, but really you just have to write one function and then the overloaded operator, the, to do its work, it's really just gonna call the function that you do. So, so, so hopefully the second half of each one of these first three tasks um, is, is relatively simple. Um, you just have to define the operator, you know, the, the prototype for the, the overloaded operator correctly, but the body of it, the implementation of this, you don't have to do any, any extra work. You're just gonna be calling the function that you first created, all right? So, um, um, append, let, let's, let's go back to the code here. Um, um, as, as, as has been the case in some of the previous assignments, there is actually some functionality implemented already for you for the list class uh, when you first start the assignment. So it's got, um, it's actually got some operators overloaded already. It's got the uh, equals operator. So you've actually, we've actually seen this before, but we haven't uh, studied how you can do it yourself. But, but you've had um, examples of old overloading operators in, in our previous assignment, right? Um, but, um, um, but, but yeah, so initially we've got a couple of overloaded operators and some other functions defined for our class here. So. Um, so as usual, you should start by uncommenting the, um, Um, first test case, okay? So there's actually quite a few, there's three or four sections, but these are all testing, adding the append um, to uh, your class, uh, to the list class here, okay? Um, so as probably described, so you can see, so append, uh, initially our list is gonna, just gonna be a list of integers. Oops. So, um, so for example, if you look at our list type or list container type, you'll see that we're gonna be keep, keeping uh, actually a dynamically allocated array of integers like we've been doing before, right? But, but it's hard coded to only hold, uh, you know, a list of integer values, okay? So we append, um, um, so the append function takes an int value as input, um, and it needs to actually return a reference to a list. Okay, um, and, and we're not going to be creating a new list. So, so when you append an item, you're not creating a new list and appending it to that new list. You're actually appending it to this list. Um, but um, uh, in order to make the overloaded operator work correctly, we we want to um, return a list reference to ourself. So, so the last thing you wanna do for the append is just return this, all right? So um, I'll give you most of that then, so um, uh, to get us started here. So, um, so it returns a reference to a list. So that, that's how you return a reference to a list. Um, and it takes an int um, as input, right? It's not a constant number function in this class, in this case, because we're gonna actually be modifying the list. We're gonna be appending that value when we call it, right? Um, although kind of anticipating things, I might not have said this in the description, but uh, we can think of this as a constant value. So when you pass in basic types, it doesn't really matter if you call it, declare them as constant or not. So when you pass them in by values, just make a copy of that anyway, right? But later on, when we templatize this, um, we, we probably will want to declare this to be a constant input parameter that we pass in here, so. All right, 
So if we do that, um, so as usual, you know, we, we could check we could check if um, um, by defining the append, I've now got an append, and it should actually allow me to compile this file, but when it gets link, I haven't, we haven't done the implementation yet. So if I um, recompile, um, it'll actually compile my test and compile everything, but uh, we'll get an error with an undefined reference to the append function um, until we actually implement the append. Let's get the append implemented. As usual, um, you should always start by giving the function documentation. So um, I'm going to put this before the already existing um, overloaded um, indexing operator and uh, Boolean uh, equivalence operator here. So let's find those before, after all the, the getter and setter methods here. Uh, I'm going to put it right here before the existing overloaded indexing operator. This ends the value to the list. Um, so in this case, we're going to have to grow our list. Is that right? So um, Oh, um, so I've given you um, a method um, to actually uh, uh, grow the list as needed. Okay, so this, this is a, a common thing. So we're actually going to have um, in this assignment. Um, we've got two variables. So, so size keeps track of the actual number of items in the list, but allocation size keeps track of the amount of allocated memory that we have. Okay, so. Um, Basically, um, and, and I already gave you this function. So um, the grow list is needed if the list is currently full. So if size is equal to allocation size, it will um, increase the size of the list. But it does this by doubling the list size. So um, let me open my outline so I can jump more easily to this. So if we look at the grow list if needed, um, we're actually kind of doubling. So, so if if size is less than allocation size, we're fine. Um, we can we don't need to grow the list right now. But if they're equal, then um, it grows the list. Okay. And, and what it normally does, if, if the if the list is empty initially, it just starts it off at some initial allocation size. But if the list currently is, is not empty, if it's bigger than that, it it, it grows it by doubling the size. Right? This is kind of common. Uh, maybe I'll talk about this later uh, if people are interested in it. So when we get to hashing, this is kind of important. Uh, so you normally don't want to just grow the list by just doing it one at a time or maybe like a fixed size, like five or something at a time. By, by doubling the size of the list, um, we reduce it. So it's expensive to grow the list and then copy all the values over there. So you kind of want to minimize that. So, so a good um, strategy is to double the size of your allocation um, and that tends to um, make it uh, to minimize and make it manageable the um, um, amount of times you actually have to grow and copy all the values all right um, so really all you need to do in order to use that grow list if needed um, in your function is just call it initially, right? So um, if the list is big enough to append how you um, can grow it as necessary first, right? So for that that function will do it for you. This if you call up the uh, uh, list. So give them a value, pin it, the value to name to the list, um, and uh, I could probably make a better description there. So, but so the, the parameter is coming in is the new value to append to the end of this list. The 
and we're returning a, a reference to this um, list. Um, we do this so that um, we can chain um, and operations. Um, see some examples of that when you look at the tests and stuff so all right so that, that's a basic um basic uh, documentation here for right so um As already mentioned in the assignment description, uh, in order to return the list reference, you just return the dereferenced pointer to this pointer to itself, right? So the implementation then is what? Um, you already know once you get past this function that that you've got enough memory in um, in your array of values to hold another item. So you just need to append the item to the end um, and increment size, right? So for example, the, the first best case here just appends a value. So initially a, a list is expected to have a size of zero, it'd be empty. So once you append the value, it should have a size of one. Um, um, if, if you call the grow list, if needed, um, it's going to initially allocate the array to have enough room for 10 values if, if the list was initially empty. So it'll end up with um, an allocation size of 10 after that, right? And the value at index zero, the value at the front of the list should be the five that we just appended. And I already implemented the, well, the, the, the assignment you were given already implements the overloaded indexing operator and the, the, the string operator um, for the class. You know. um, so, you know, the implementation of this Pretty straightforward. I don't know if I'm giving away um, anything. Um, we just go ahead and do this. So, so like we said, we've got our list of values, um, and, and the current the parameter, um, the, the the number of variable called size, holds the current size, right? So, um, if the size is currently five, that means we've got values in index zero to four. Of our values already, right? So if I want to append a new value, I want to put it at, at, at index five, which is going to be the same size. Then I want to increase size by one, right? Because I now added the sixth item, the sixth item that's in index zero through five now. So. So um, that's probably, I think that's the full implementation. Now. So if we do that, um, it should be the compile, it should be running here. Uh, I up that room of the semicolon there. A list if needed is undefined. Um, oh, um, I also forgot to. Say this is a member function of the pin class, so so I mean, grow list if needed is private to the list class. So, so yeah, it doesn't know that unless uh, this is actually a member of the list, list class. Uh, where to find that function there? Values. A lot of mistakes there. So. Uh, 
Pull the pilot again. There we go, that's better. And then let's try run our tests. And then, yep, so that passes all the tests. Um, so all, all the ones that we just uncommoned, I think. Um, so here's an example of what I mean by chaining the append. So by returning a, a reference uh, to this list, when we append the five here, it returns a list. So, so the result of this, the return is a reference back to the list, but after we've appended the five. So now then we can chain it and call it again. So, and so now we'll end up appending seven, right? And then so on and so forth, right? So you end up with a list that's initially empty, having values five, seven, nine, eleven, thirteen, fifteen. 11, 13, 15, right? So that's why we're returning a list reference here, right? Now, the second thing, like I said, is you need to, um, Second part of task one, second part of each of the first three tasks is um, find the overloaded operator. Okay. So, um, all I'm going to give you on that is um, um, so every one of the functions that you create has, a, has the corresponding overloaded operator. Um, so we're using the um, output stream operator, the, the two uh, less than arrows, right? So this is really just uh, it's really just the name of a function with a special form, right? So so all overloaded operators are defined by using operator before the actual operator that we're overloading, right? But otherwise, I mean, it's, it's the same as a function name, just with the special with the operator name and, and, and the actual operator that we're overloading, right? Okay. Uh, but in this case, when you implement the overloaded operator, don't don't copy the code again. What what the what your overloaded operator should be doing is just calling append, right? So you want to call append um, on the value that's passed into the overloaded operator. And you want to return the result that append returned because again we're 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 um, um, return, returning a reference to the list. So we need to re you need to return whatever append is returned. All right. So that's how you overload um, the operators for the append, the prepend, um, and so on. Right? Um, so append adds the item to the end of the list. Right. So if you um, Yeah, if you call the, the values like this, five, three, seven, you end up with you know, five is added to the end of the list first, and then three and the seven, so you end up with the list five, three, seven. Prepend um, and again, we're using the operator that goes this way for prepend. Oh, and, and we put the value before. Oh no, sorry, no, we don't do that. So yeah, it might make more sense like that. I'm saying, but but um, um You look at the tests on here when we do the prepend. Like these. So, so we put the, the, uh, the value like this. But, but basically, this puts the, the value at the front of the list. Okay. So if, if you Pre-pin five and then seven. Seven will be in front of five. You know, so basically fifteen will be at the front of the list. Down to five was the first one that we pre-pinned, so it ended up at the end of the list. Okay. And again, if you use that returning a reference to a list, then you can um, chain the pre -pin. All right. Um, And then for the concatenate operator, um, concatenate is going to return a, a new list um,
Oh, yeah, we're going to return a new list. So, so the concatenate operator, um, we're in, and um, so you'll initially start by creating uh, a member function called concatenate that takes uh, like list two um, as a, a, a constant reference parameter, right? And you're actually going to create a new list and return the, the new list. Right? So you're going to be returning um, not a list, not a list reference, but um, a list. So we talked about that. You need to dynamically allocate a new list um, that's big enough to hold the concatenating size um, and, and do some other things, right? No, but, but yeah, the, the, the purpose of the, the concatenation operator is we take two lists, like the list one has one, two, three, list two has four, five, six, and the result would be a new list three that has a value of one, two, three, four, five, six, right? So um, I can talk more about that on Thursday because I, I wanted to begin also talking about um, what you have to do to get started for templatizing your class, right? Although, of course, you know, get, get the first three things working. So, um, I mean, I think I give like 80% of the credit for this assignment if you just get the first three tasks working, right? Uh, and then another 20% or so for templatizing the class here. So, uh, but I think this is important. So, so you know, I've already, already just discuss this a little bit. So, you know, the reason why we want to templatize is we want to be able to have list classes um, that can hold things other than just list of integers, okay? So, um, So let's try this. So, so what I want you to do is to um, um, create a new branch starting from before you did any, any work. Okay, so this is what's being described here. And then you're gonna redo the work on this new branch. Um, so an easy thing to do is, is to copy the, the things that you do for pass one, two, three, one by one, um, and then templatize them um, you know, once you copy them over, right? So um, to do this, um, I'm, I'm not certain if this is true anymore, but um, VS Code did seem to be having some problems actually checking out. This is a common thing to want to be able to do using Git to, to go back in time, basically. So, so to check out a previous um, commit, um, start working from there, right? So to do this, you have to first find out um, the ID of the commit you want to go back to. So for me, um, I haven't done a commit yet, but I've, I've got it passing the first half of the test here. So let me go ahead and commit. Um, um, all this code here. You should, right, let me make certain everything's still compiling and running. So, you know, always like to make certain that um, when you um, make a commit, that it's um, compiling and running correctly here. So, this, this is not, I must uncomment it's something I didn't mean to uncomment. So, um, I didn't put in the overloaded operator yet. So, let me go ahead and comment those back out. Uh, restate, get that in there. Okay, there we go. And um, all right, get that, and let's push it to the repository then. All right. So 
now if I look at my pull request, I should see we have the first commit on there. Um, and the commit number was um, before it started. So, so what you normally want to do, we look at all the commits here. So um, there's various ways to look back through the log, your history of the commits and things. Um, on GitHub, you can always go over um, and um, look at your commits here. So um, I believe what, what you want to do is you want to find the one right before your first commit that you do yourself, right? So, um, um, so I want to do nine on here. Um, you can actually use that full number if you want to. Or like the first eight characters is usually enough for this hash, this commit hash. So um, why I'm getting, the reason I'm getting that is because as is described um, here, uh, when you're starting on um, S4, you first want to go ahead and do this. So uh, open up a, a terminal on your assignment, um, should be assignment seven here, um, and um, do a git checkout um, on that number, okay? Um, on, on that commit number, right? So, um, All right, so, so you should be able to do like a, a get checkout um, and give the commit number in order to go to a particular um, branch back in history, all right? All right. And, and, and again, you probably don't want to do that until, you know, you don't have any pending changes to be committed and all your files have been saved, right? So when you do that, um, what you'll see, like for example, if you go back and look at your code, I mean, I've been reverted back to before I did that commit. Okay, so um, the um, there's no uh, work anymore. Uh, I haven't uncommented the, uh, the, the any of the, the tests for task one, um, and I won't have my um, append operator that I defined in the header file. I mean, it, of course, it's there. It's, it's in the repository we committed, but we just went back to a previous version by doing that um, git checkout. Okay, so I'm, I'm back before I actually made that commit here, and so my pen function isn't in there anymore. Either, right. So, so you you want to you know do that and check that you have actually gone back in time before you start doing your work. With pass one, two, and three, right? And again, don't don't do this. I mean, don't do this until you get all the task one, two, and three working, right? So those are, those are more important to get working first. Um, then you can try templatizing stuff here. So once you've gone back to the commit uh, before, um, we're going to create a new branch. Um, template, right? So we want to switch, create, the dash C will create the branch called template and switch to it, right? So, so you'll be on this template branch, right? Again, all, all this stuff can, it's supposed to be able to be done from, from Visual Studio Code's GUI, like creating branches and switching to them and things. Um, so I think this create new branch would, all, would probably work. I had problems with the switch, with, with the checkout, which is really kind of strange, um, a basic one. I haven't tried it recently to see if maybe um, I got fixed here, but it should work from the command line. So, um, so after after you check out to, to the branch, before you start doing any work, uh, do, this will create a new branch called template and switch to it from that point in your history, all right? So now you might want to look here. So, so if you do that, I mean, immediately you'll see, you should see that um, 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 Visual Studio Code has um, 
recognize that we're now on a different branch called template, right? And if you do a status, you'll see your own branch template. The Visual Studio Studio Code is saying that we're on the template branch now, right? So now all the work you do um, is going to end up being put into this separate branch, which is different from the main branch that you were committing the, the first three tasks onto. So, so the main branch right now has the should have the work once you complete task one, two, and three. Um, for task one, two, three, the non-templatized version. So now in the template branch, we're going to be putting in work. Um, where we templatize the stuff that you did um, in the first three tasks, right? So, um, so we're not quite done yet. So the first thing you should do before you start templatizing stuff is um, I actually gave you um, um, some new versions of the test file. Okay, so there's a new version of the test that work with the templatized um, uh, or, or they're expecting a templatized version of the list class, right? So um, so anyway, so okay, and, and there's also um, I actually got the work started for you. So, so there's, there's a subdirectory called template in your project that contains some files. So copy the files named um, test int template um, and test string template uh, to your source subdirectory. Um, and th those are gonna be re replacing the old test list.cpp file, right? At least that tests specifically for um, a list of integers and a list of strings, right? Um, there's also a new make file um, that you should copy from the template subdirectory um, and that goes up into the root. Okay, so let's let's, let's do each one time. So, so first of all, let's get these two files, the two new tests um, from the um, uh, the template subdirectory into our source subdirectory. All right. So um, you can use your file browser to copy things around uh, like this. Right. So you should find that there's a um, subdirectory called template um, that has uh, some files in here. So you should be able to like um, select these one at a time and then do like a let's see, copy, I believe I can do control C copy. Um, and then if you select like source and do a control V, um, it'll, it'll paste it into the, you know, so, so I copied it from here and pasted it into my source subdirectory. Uh, let's get the string, like I said, you'll see. So it's like adding a new file here. So we'll put the, the test string there. So these are red because um, these are untracked yet. We, we just uh, added those new files into the source directory here. Okay. Um, so we want to copy the, the make file from the template directory. Uh, to replace the current make file that we have at the root. Okay, so, so there's a make file um, here at the root. It's easy to get confused here. So make sure that, that you um, look at this correctly. But, but here's the, the make file at my root. Right? Um, you'll see, for example, once you get the right make file in here, um, um, it, it'll be using uh, the, the test int template and the test string template instead of the test list. That's the main thing that the, the, the new make file does. So basically, I'm going to do the same thing, but I want to copy this make file uh, from my template directory here um, that's using the templatized tests. I'll just control C that. I'm going to copy to my root. So I'll go back here and select my root. And if I do a control V here, um, it doesn't allow us to do that like that. So let's try instead of, so if I have that selected, I do control V. Oh, okay, it did, okay, although be careful. So I now got my original make file. And when I did that, it prepended a, a, a different name. So I really want the make file copy. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, hit delete, select that and hit delete um, to permanently delete that. Uh, and then we'll do, um, all right, F2 or 
or I'll do a, a right mouse button to uh, rename that. There we go, yeah, FD renamed. It could be called make file. Now, if you successfully replace that, it's going to it's going to come out as being modified. Um, this file. So, for example, if you go back and look at um, um, the source code, if you look at the, the changes, the only thing that's been changed in the make file is that instead of using just the test list.cpp, uh, we use the test int template and the test string template. Right. And yeah, that's the only change there. So. This stuff off here so I don't get confused. So at that point, if you've done it correctly, you should see that, that uh, you've got those two things in there that are untracked uh, because we haven't added them to revision control yet. And you've got make files shown as being modified. If you check that, the, the one, the make file in your top level, you know, not, not the one in your template writing, but the, the one in your project. That's going to be used now for building should have test int template, test string template um, here that, that we're going to um, be building with um, and, and running the test. Okay. Um, okay. So the, the, the project should build and run. Okay, so another thing you can actually do, uh, we don't need this old test, so I'm going to also delete that from there, right? But uh, so, so we should be able to check. So once you get the, the make file modified, you know, copied from the template directly in there, and you get the, uh, the, the, the test from here. Um, we will build and run. Um, Um, oh, yes, yeah, so I missed copying one thing. So besides the make file and besides the test, uh, you also need to copy the initial version of the list.hpp and the list.cpp file from the template directory as well. Okay. So, so um, basically, I mean, all these files in here need to be, well, not the readme, but every, everything else needs to be copied to their correct place. So, so the two tests and the list.cpp should go into the source. Let me go and do that. Let's see. We, uh, yeah, so again, since um, uh, it would have been overriding that, um, it's going to give a, a name here. So if you look at this file, I've started the templatization for you. Um, uh, I'll show you on the header here. So, so I'm going to select the old one and delete it um, and then uh, rename this one. It should be called list.cpp. Uh, it should show up as modified. Uh, likewise, the, I want to get the list.hpp file out of the template subdirectory and, and put it over put it over the old list.hpp in the include subdirectory. So let's delete the old one after we copy it. Uh, probably a better way to do this. Um, probably, probably if you deleted the file first and then copied, uh, you wouldn't have to do all this renaming like I just did here. But not yet. Now, if you look at, for example, list.hpp, um, you'll see that it's a template class. So the main way you can see that from um, the header file uh, is just we've added this boilerplate um, to, to, to turn it, it's not a template in the class, right? Um, and then there's one or two other small differences, you know, like, for example, the constructor is now. Um, expecting a, a list of type T, a list templatized on type T instead of just a list. Um, and uh, this other constructor is expecting an array of values of type T instead of an array of values of type it. Right? So, and and uh, the actual type of the array is T, the template type T instead of it's, you know, of our values. All right, so if, if all that works, you should be able to um, do a clean build. I, I 
strongly encourage you to do clean first uh, once you're starting on part four here, uh, and then do control shift two or, or make all, and then it should build if you just correctly copied over those files from the template into the places they need to go, including the make file and all the others. And it should, um, as before, it should um, run um, some tests. A few tests are uncommon, but not too many. If you have all of that working um, before you start templatizing, go ahead and make a commit. Uh, and this will make a commit and push it to the template branch, right? So, um, so now once I've done these, um, Deleted the old test list I've, 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 by, by copying over the make file, the list.hpp and list.cpp. Uh, those show up as modified now, right? Um, and I've got these two new files um, uh, test in template, test string template. So it's kind of what you should see when you do this here. So, um, uh, let me check. Um, Yeah, so, so um, if you're going to compile and run, make a commit and push these to the template branch of repository. So as I, I started doing that. So once we do this, and, and again, we're on the template branch now. So as I stage my changes, um, This is the initial work to templatize the list class and to uh, you uh, us that are expecting Commit that. Um, now we're um, going to push it to the um, Try and push. I've got push there. Um, so now, if you go back and look after doing that, um, you'll see that there's now two branches listed. Uh, so you got your main branch and you got the template branch, right? And if you look, open up the template branch, um, and um, so, so now I'm actually looking at the template branch. So another way you can look at the template branch is selecting this commit code. Um, if you look at the commits, you'll see that we've only got that commit, the task four that I just did, right? Um, on that branch. Yeah. Uh, and then, and then I ask you to create a, a new pull request. Um, I believe so. So once you've got your first commit on there, on the template branch, um, So we'll create a new pull request called template. Um, that's going to be tracking the changes of the template branch for merge bracketing to the main branch. Okay. Um, so the way to do that to create a pull request. Um, so this is the, the kind of the normal way actually that you create a pull request. So, so if you go back up uh, on on GitHub, go to pull requests, um, and then um, say. Um, um, you could, I think, but if you see this as pushes, you can just do compare and pull request. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and just do it as a new pull request, though. So here, what we're basically saying is I want to compare the main branch uh, with, uh, actually, I want to compare my template branch with the main branch, right? Um, because I'm, I'm making changes to template here. Right? So if you do that, you should see that um, um, it will have um, 
basically the, 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 the result should be the changes to template do the initial templatization of the list class in here. All right, um, so, so that, that should be the basic then. So I'll go ahead and create the pull request. Um, um, you should call it name the pull request. Um, so I like, I like to use a capital T for the pull request name. The pull request together work in templatizing. So if you do it like I just um, showed you, um, you'll now have two pull requests um, between this template one um, and the, the template one um, should only show that commit that we just did before. Um, so if there's, if it's saying that there's conflicts here, um, I wasn't quite expecting, but uh, we might want to after we push the commit, I might want to uh, resynchronize and see if it's showing the conflicts locally here. Um, so we'll have to come back to that. So, so yeah, I kind of want to wrap up here. Um, it's already been kind of the, the full time here. Um, so we'll go into more detail of this on Thursday, um, or if people ask questions about it uh, via email and stuff. So, um, but uh, but yeah, so, so that's kind of uh, hopefully uh, good information to get you started on the assignment seven. Um, let me know um, if you need some um, help um, getting started on the fourth part here to get the branch created and things like that. Um, all right, that's it for this video, and I will uh, see you guys later then.